Let's talk about the differences between the two sides in the Revolutionary War, the English or the British, and the Americans or the colonists. First up, the advantages of the English. England is by far a stronger military and economic power when the war begins. They have four times the population. That means four times the number of people that they can call on and press into service. It's also four times the number of people that they can tax and provide money for the war. England also had a well-trained regular army. And when we say regular army, what we mean is soldiers whose only job it is, is to be a soldier. They are not part-time soldiers. They are not farmers or fishermen most of the year and then pick up a rifle when the nation needs them. They serve full-time in the army. In addition, Germany also had hired a number of soldiers from other parts of the world, most notably Hessian soldiers from Germany. These were soldiers who didn't have wars to fight in Germany and contracted with other countries to fight, and Britain was using their uh, very formidable military prowess. Even more impressive than Britain's army is their navy. At the time of the Revolutionary War, Britain featured the world's strongest navy, and that navy's strength was based heavily on their officers, and they had strong, experienced officers leading that navy. However, there are problems for Britain. As seen by this map, Britain, on one side of the Atlantic, will have to transport all the men and all the supplies all the way over to the colonies. They will also have to maintain communication between the colonies, between the Western Hemisphere and England, which is in the Eastern Hemisphere. Another problem can be seen on this map, and that is quite simply America was too big to conquer. Britain could take the port cities, places like New York and Boston and Charleston, South Carolina, but the Continental Army had all this land to run free, to be, they weren't boxed in in any way, shape, or form, and it was going to be very hard to conquer this landmass. Perhaps the biggest problem for the British is America's commitment to independence. Britain could only win the Revolutionary War by crushing the Americans' will to resist. And the British never truly appreciated the Americans' commitment to independence. you got to remember that before the French Revolution, soldiers across Europe were paid. It was simply a job. People did not necessarily fight for idealistic reasons. These Americans, these colonists, are much more committed to the Republican ideals that they believe in. They're much more committed to independence and winning this war. On the American side, on the colonist side, some people want to use guerrilla war. They want to hide from the British and use sneak attacks and pester their supply lines. But Washington says no. Washington creates a regular Continental Army. And the reason is that the Continental Army can serve as a symbol. As long as the Continental Army is in the field, no matter how big or how small it is, this revolution will continue. The fight will continue. And it can build the morale of the people. Also, the Continental Army can receive aid. If France or somebody else wants to help us fight Britain, it's much easier to give money to a Continental Army than to give money to a bunch of colonists who are hiding in the woods and just using sneak attacks. Washington points out that just being a bunch of ragtag rebels is not the way to win the war. We need an actual Continental Army. Because the Continental Army is so important, Washington is very cautious. He does not want to put the army in jeopardy. He cannot afford to have the Continental Army lose a crushing defeat or be captured. So, for most of the war, Washington's predominant strategy is retreat. The Continental Army isn't the only 
group waging war against the British. There is also the colonial militia, which is controlling large areas of the country and helping demand support for the Patriots' war efforts. These are the, think of them like the private armies of each individual colony. These people were already part of the colonial militia. They are not part of the Continental Army, but they are still fighting the British. They're also, most importantly, um, making sure that the loyalists, the people who want to remain loyal to Britain, do not gain too much influence. African Americans served in the Revolutionary War. Thousands, in fact. Many of them fought for the Continental Army uh, because they had hoped to receive their rights. For example, Massachusetts and Rhode Island uh, gave African Americans civil rights as a result of fighting in the war. And in 1778, the Rhode Island Assembly decided to free any slave who agreed to fight in the war. But most of the African Americans who fought in the Revolutionary War fought for the British. In fact, two times as many African Americans fought for the British. And that was because they felt like after the war, they would have a better chance of being treated as equals and seeing slavery ended if Britain won. After the war, many of these African Americans who had fought for the British relocated. They moved out of the 13 colonies, like many loyalists, because they wouldn't have been welcome here. They relocated to Nova Scotia. Some of them relocated to Florida, which was still um, not yet part of the United... Well, not controlled by Britain and, and not part of the original 13 colonies. And some relocated to the British island colony of Jamaica after the war. 